This episode of Hoochos is brought to you by Home Grow. Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're going to be going through the greenhouse. I'm gonna show you what's happening, what new systems I've got on the go, and we'll be looking at our old systems like our wick wedge hydroponic system, Beto bucket hydroponic system, the float box hydroponic system, as well as the dragon fruit hydroponic system. And you'll be getting some sneak peeks at systems like this, rock wedge hydroponic system, the ginger and turmeric wick wedge hydroponic system. And I'm gonna introduce you to a 3D print that will be released upon the release of this video so that you can adapt the hooch halo to four millimeter tubing such as the tubing you might find on our Beto bucket. So let's get started and I'll go clockwise around the greenhouse. So as you can see, I've expanded the Dutch bucket system, the Beto bucket system to this side of the greenhouse and I've planted in eggplants. So the way that I did this was exactly the same way that I installed the Dutch bucket tomato system in my Dutch bucket tomato video, which you can find here. Plan is for these eggplants to be strung up in a similar fashion to those Dutch bucket tomatoes with our line and lean system. As you can see, our irrigation has just turned on and that's probably a good cue for me to show you the latest 3D print. Oh God, that sun. So this is the hooch halo. And I actually designed this with a 13 millimeter barb so that you can get the maximum flow out of the hooch halo. But by adapting this halo with this, now this is a four millimeter barb that will adapt our hooch halo to a four millimeter pipe, which will then allow us to get a nice even distribution of nutrient solution around our plant. Um, I've actually found that these are really versatile. I haven't actually snapped a single four millimeter barb and I've been really impressed. You may need to run a small drill bit through the center to get the maximum flow out of these. I've found that 2.5 millimeters or three millimeters works perfectly fine. And that will allow the most nutrient solution to travel through this adapter. And as you can see here, it's a really nice even distribution. And the 3D printable clips are doing a really good job as well holding this line in place. So we can just place that around the base of our plant, like so. And that will allow the roots to explore the grow media all the way to the top of that media. Okay, so as we keep moving around the greenhouse, we've got our Beto bucket tomatoes, which are exactly the same system as we were just looking at. The beef steaks are starting to ripen, which is really exciting. I'm super keen for these delicious tomatoes. On some of the leaves, you can notice I have been using Dipel, so it leaves a powdery residue as well as fungicide. So I use that in combination just to keep the mildews down in the wet, humid times that we've been having. I have been pollinating these myself with an ultrasonic toothbrush, which looks like this. I've removed the bristles. I just removed those with a blade and it vibrates and it allows me to pollinate the flowers by placing the back of the brush against the flower stem and then the pollen just falls out the back of the flower. You don't need to do it on every individual flower, you just need to do it on the back of the stem and as you can see the pollen just pours out like so. It's actually extremely satisfying to do. And this has seen my yield from the tomatoes go up significantly with the use of this pollinating device. It's also pretty cathartic coming out with a cup of tea in the morning or a beer in the afternoon and pollinating your tomatoes. So in front of me here, we have a rock wedge hydroponic system. It's essentially the same thing as a wick wedge, except I'm using rock wool. So these are slabs of rock wool that I get from EE Murin Sons. They're about five bucks each. Um, the latest ones I've been getting are actually cheaper and bigger, which are four dollars each. 
They look like this. This obviously isn't all one. This is a slab of 12, but I just bought it in bulk so that I'm set for the future. These have been really fantastic. There's absolutely no difference between the Colty Lean and the Grodan. And as you can see in front of me, they work absolutely fine. So this 3D print is available on my pre-release. There's a heap of other 3D prints on my pre-release that I haven't mentioned yet and probably won't mention till they come out in video form. So these are African horned cucumbers. I was growing them under Monios LED strips, which are a cheap Amazon available LED strip. And I've got a review coming on those very soon. I bought them because I've seen a ton of reviews on those lights and they don't really answer any questions whether they're good or not. They kind of just look like they've bought the lights without you using them at all. There's no feedback on how well they grow plants. They just open the box and review it straight up. So I've been working on that for the last few months. I've done a heap of seedlings starting with it. They perform fairly well. I've yet to test them over full size plants, but we'll have a look at a couple of time lapses and you can see just behind you, these are cos lettuce. You can tell that I've left these seedlings too long because the base is extremely leggy and the top has obviously had enough light in this greenhouse environment. Um, so you get this stretch followed by normal growth and it's not ideal. You can see they're all just falling over in the system because they're not supported correctly by a thick stem at the base. They kind of just collapse. Now these were grown under the Monios lights, but they were super crowded in. I can't really say it was because of the lights that this happened. It was because there were so many plants in a confined space. I've done a couple of grows in this system since last we did an update and as usual the NFT has performed flawlessly. This is definitely the ideal system if you want to grow a bunch of lettuce or other greens. On the other side here I've got a mixture of different plants. I've got some Pak Choi iceberg lettuce which isn't heading up very well at all but that actually doesn't bother me because it's really nice just being able to pick the leaves off and they're really nice crunchy textured leaves. I've got some red lettuce spread throughout. This is generally my mishmash side on my NFT. A bit of everything that I only eat a little bit of, whereas on the other side I tend to have a monocrop of one kind of greens. Over here is my favorite hydroponic system at the moment, the Wick Wedge hydroponic system. This hydroponic system has been absolutely unbelievable with one or two caveats, which I'll get to in a second. My reservoir has run out a couple of times and these bags actually hold a ton of nutrient and moisture that has allowed these hydroponic tomatoes to get through periods without top up from my thousand litre res. Now, the Beto buckets also allow that. They do it with the 50 litre res that they've got down there. And that will give me a little bit of wiggle room if I do forget to check on my thousand litre res. Um, the reason the res has been running dry is because a couple of my systems have been leaking and that has caused it to go down by about 150 litres a day faster than it should. Unfortunately, this is one of the systems that leaks. Uh, this isn't due to the system, it's due to the design of the supporting of the system. So underneath uh, how I've laid out this system, I had half cinder blocks, which you can see here. And what's happened as the system has grown and evolved is that these cinder blocks were only placed in the center and on the outsides. And I expected the pipes, the rain gutter grow systems to support the weight of these bags. But as the plants have gotten heavier and the bags have filled with nutrients, these pipes have actually pressed down and gone below this supporting timber on the outside. And that has caused it to overflow or at least allow the nutrient to touch the top of the bag and leak out underneath through capillary action just by 
uh, the water's meniscus actually pulling the uh, nutrient solution out and onto the ground. Uh, this actually caused the roots in this system to venture down the side um, of the, between the pipe and the wood. Now this wouldn't happen at all if you can keep the nutrient solution just below the top of the channel. And the way that you do that is by supporting the pipe underneath properly. The way that I've done this is I've added in extra blocks underneath the channel to raise it back up and I had to actually hammer and jam in pieces of wood to keep it from dropping down. Now all my leaks have been solved and that's fantastic, but it was a bit of a problem for a while there. So just make sure if you're going to build this system uh, that you support this pipe with the nutrient in it properly. So I wouldn't have anything less than full support um, on a flat piece of ground under this. Or if you are going to have it on a slope, just make sure you support the pipe completely when you are setting up the system, unlike myself. Okay, so let's have a look at the progress of all of the outdoor hydroponic systems right after a word from the sponsor of today's video, HomeGrow. HomeGrow is Australia's fastest growing hydroponic retailer with the aim of allowing people to produce their own hydroponic produce sustainably at home. The HomeGrow platform is a community for those looking for sustainable alternatives to farming through the use of industry leading technology and innovative products. HomeGrow currently have the largest selection of grow lighting in Australia, and it's still growing. Brands like HLG, Chill LED, Viper Spectra, Nextlight, Perfect Works, King LED, Gavita, Adjuster Wings, and ProGrow, just to name a few. So if any of this has piqued your interest, head over to www.homegrow.com.au and receive 5% off your shopping cart with the code HUCHO. So if we venture outside of the greenhouse, we have what was formerly the root vegetable hydroponic system. Now, as you can see, the volunteer tomatoes have popped up through and they're looking a bit sad at the moment because I had a heap of leaks throughout this system. The problem with that is it's been draining my 1000 litre IBC and I haven't been able to get in amongst and try and find the leak. I'm gonna completely deprive these tomatoes of nutrition and I'm gonna let them all wither and die and then I'll just remove them as they die. I am gonna continue growing the turmeric and the ginger that's in the back, but I'll just use a watering can to water that from the top in the meantime until I get these systems back up and running. They are producing a ton of tomatoes, but there's just so much pest pressure in here. I wanna get rid of it um, just to eliminate the chances that it'll transfer from in here over to the greenhouse. And I have been extremely happy with how this system has been producing the turmeric and the ginger. It's actually being overtaken at the moment by cucumelons, which originated over on the trellising. And these have just been going absolutely crazy. They're almost a weed, but they are really nice to snack on. So I've just been letting them go. They're actually just a tiny cucumber and they're fantastically snackable. Even though they are choking out a little bit of the system, I'm just leaving it because I enjoy it. I might set up a dedicated system for these given how vigorous they are. I mean, you can see back here how the cucumelons have just taken over all of this shady area behind the systems. So they've come all the way out of the systems and I'm pretty sure that they're still getting their nutrition from the hydroponic nutrient in the cocoa. They're just an incredibly vigorous vine. So here we have another wick wedge hydroponic system that I'll be doing a video on very soon. I've planted exclusively ginger and turmeric in this system. And the reason is it's done so well over in our rain gutter grow system. I wanted to utilize the ease of which the wick wedge hydroponic system allows you to just plant out a mass of cocoa. And I'm really interested to see how well the ginger and turmeric take to this system. I think it's going to be a really good yield and I'm really excited to show you that video. 
So here we have our float box hydroponic system. All of our plants died off in the masses of rain that we had in our floods recently, but I replanted it and these plants are going fantastically. I love this system for cucurbits and I think I'll get a ton more grows out of these grow bags before I have to consider changing the perlite and cocoa. And in an upcoming video in the front there, I'm gonna utilize the other bed that I made when I made this float box system for potatoes, but not in these bags. I've got another idea that I've been working on. I've got a 3D printer that's already available on my pre-lease that we're gonna be utilizing in that area for a potato crop over the winter once I get my hands on some seed potatoes. Behind me, we have the dragon fruits. And these are one of the hydroponic systems that I'm most excited about at the moment. As you can see, I've made supports for the top of the poles and these allow the dragon fruits to grow up and out of the supports and hang down. Now this will encourage fruiting once the branches fall over and are overhanging these trellises. So at the top here, you can see that I've cut off the end of the dragon fruits limb. Now, the reason I've done that is because when you cut it, this is a fresh cut, this is a few days old, it will push out new growth from all of the nodes around the end of the dragon fruit. And that is what you can see is happening here, where I've cut the top and all of the nodes around the dragon fruit start to push out new growth. This will allow a crown at the top and that will fill out and overhang the trellising. So for the trellising, all I did was I cut some pieces of timber to length and I nailed it together with a nail gun. Now the outside posts are actually made of untreated pine because I didn't want the arsenic in the treated pine. Unfortunately, I had to go with treated pine for the center and going down into where the pole slides into our support system. And it actually has held up really well. They're really stable and I'm extremely happy with how they turned out. I actually really like the look of them. They're very rustic and thrown together, but they do the job perfectly. And I actually had a mate who is obsessed with cactus come around recently and he's never seen dragon fruits growth as fast as this. Now again, all I've been doing is top watering them with hydroponic nutrient. So my 1000 liter res of hydroponic nutrient, turn it on and because there's so much nutrient in there, I get a really nice flow. I've just been coming along and watering the top of the cocoa and scoria mix that these dragon fruit are in and that has produced this result. Now I could hook up the rain gutter grow systems below, but I figure why change such a good thing when I'm really only coming along and watering these once a week and sporadically at that. They've really responded well to negligence, which has been fantastic, but they've also really responded well to the hydroponic method of growing, which is no nutrition in the grow media and full nutrition supplied by an aqueous solution of nutrients. So that's how I've achieved this result with these dragon fruit. All right. That brings you all up to date with everything that's happening in and around the Hucho's greenhouse. Thank you for watching this far. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit like on the video. And if you're interested in any of the 3D prints that have been featured in today's video, they're all available through my Patreon. And I really appreciate those people that stick around month to month and give me the resources to commit my time and effort into designing and making 3D printable hydroponic accessories. Thank you for watching this episode of Hoochos. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hoochos.